Thanks for checking out this highlight from Epic Loot Radio. If you want to see the full podcast after the highlight, just check the top link in the description for more. All right. Um, <laughs> so other notes that they're going to be addressing. Camera shake during cutscenes and dialogues. We kind of briefly touched on this. Uh, this is not something that we want to be able to address fully for the demo. It kind of makes sense to me personally. But we are aware of the desire from players seeing the shaking reduce. They believe removing the 30 frames per second restriction during these scenes will actually help reduce the impact of camera movement. But they're going to continue to investigate what's going to be done. Basically, translation, not in time for the full release of the game. They are aware of the feedback. And they'll update accordingly. I, uh, it's not a toggle. There's no button. Like, hey, would you like the camera to shake? You know, in that regards. Uh, matchmaking. While the upcoming patch may help alleviate some of the issues that they're keeping a close eye on, in the time it makes the match make, and they're going to continue to investigate where such matchmaking is taking longer than it should. Here's my old man theory. I'm not old, but here's my old man theory. I think matchmaking is the dumbest thing in a PvE game. I have never in my life seen everybody coming out of a match made PvE experience going, well, that was awesome. It's always, I can't believe this SOB over here didn't do whatever, and I was trying to res them, and then they just moved on. Case in point, every game ever, and other case in point, Avengers was the worst offender of it. Like, I get match made, and they're off running around doing whatever they want. I'm dead, hoping maybe they'll res me, but you can't self-res because you got a teammate out there. So that's poor design. Avengers is a whole other story. But at the end of the day, like, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just going to play with friends. Like, I'm I'm, I'm kind of sad that it exists. Like, Minecraft Dungeons, had, the developer had the best line about it when asked about matchmaking. He goes, when was the last matchmade PvE experience that you actually enjoyed? Like, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Like, I don't mind mm -hmm. matchmaking for the PvP side, and, and there's no PvP in this game, so farming doesn't do any break the game at all. Because, yeah, give me somebody to shoot at. But at the end of the day, like... You're like, wait a minute. Like, am I the am I holding them back or are they holding me back? I don't know. <laughs> Vulcan, what are your thoughts here? Matchmaking. That's just that's just my old man, like you know, old M MMO kind of thing. Like matchmaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, whenever I think about matchmaking in a PVE game, um, it's always either like World of Warcraft and going into like a matchmade dungeon and how exciting that is sometimes and other times not. Um, but then I think at how frustrating it is sometimes when I can't match make for like a Destiny raid or uh, Grandmaster Nightfalls and things like that. Um, and that's like, ah, you know, I don't have any friends that play Destiny and I would really like to play this, but I can't because mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want to go post an LFG post and that's just a lot of work. Um, so I think having it in there is great. Um, but to your point, I can definitely think of, you know, 99% of the time it's, what is this guy doing? What is this person doing? Why am why am I carrying the team? Why is this happening? And um, so yeah, I think having the options great, um, but I don't uh, necessarily think um, removing it would be beneficial. Yeah, I, I, I like and, and don't hear me wrong. I'm not calling yeah. for its removal. I'm just no. I, at a core design philosophy. I'm like, all right, it's there. It's there as a checkbox, and I hope they fix it because I know people do have, you know. But I would say it's few and far between. Now, Trent here is uh, is, is 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 basically <laughs> disproving me, yeah. saying Godfall <laughs> has matchmaking is seriously the best. I want to go to my Godfall expert, uh, Johnny. Uh, how's the how's the matchmaking? Is Trent is Trent a liar? Are we calling him out here on the podcast, or does the man He's speak being truth? Sarcastic as usual. <laughs> there is zero matchmaking in godfall i know <laughs> oh, i love it i love it oh my gosh that's, brilliant. Uh, that's my that's my buddy for you <laughs> yeah that's why i highlighted it i was like yes let's go <laughs> um, and, and i think essentially that's kind of where like it's it's when like friendship really is I think a key aspect to playing games. Like I play games, mm -hmm. play social. I love the fact that we got these great communities to kick back, relax, and have a good time. To highlight that, I think friendship is usually formed when people are usually moving in the same direction. So finding somebody who's got the same goals as you, especially with like in a video game, ends up being a greater fit. So you do have that. And matchmaking is an easy way to start that kind of light introduction. It's kind of that icebreaker situation where if you find somebody who's like, man, that's a really good player. 
let's see about teaming up again. That's where that becomes the exception. But I think it is the it is the rule rather than the the exception is when you have that good experience. And so ideally, you know, if you're able to find people that you want to you can play with, and the fact that this has cross play. Well, I think we'll allow friends to be like, especially if you become friends after big game launches, like, oh, you're a PlayStation player. I'm an Xbox player. Screw you. Like, like anyway, that's all pointless crap anyway. But the idea that it's like, y'all can just jump in and play this game. Oh, you like Outriders? I like Outriders. We should, we should team up, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you're a Technomancer? Perfect. I'm a Devastator. Oh, you know. <laughs> there is one thing that they have seriously and fundamentally messed up though. What? No end game voice chat. Hmm. So if I'm playing on PC and cross-playing with someone on PlayStation who absolutely 100% is reluctant to use Discord, I can't communicate. You got emotes. There's no in-game texture either. You got emotes. You got emotes. Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, they need to... I think that should be somewhere up there as a really high priority for them. Especially in a cross-play game. They need to have some form of in-game communication. Mm-hmm. And... I think it, it it's really really obvious right now when you're playing cross platform with people that aren't you know where you can't communicate with them because either a they don't want to use Discord or mm-hmm. you know whatever whatever the reason is it's a problem and I really hope they find a solution for it because it can hurt cross play it can hurt cross play. I hope that, bef- like, that I, I I hear you on that because it does seem like an interesting kind of thing to say. Ah, we're not gonna have it but they don't have a ping system either. And to be able mm-hmm. to sit here and ping and mark a boss to ping and mark an enemy, or to basically have some general, like predefined kind of methods of communication for basic stuff. I think that would be something that would go, a, you know, a hundred miles in this game. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's a weird, it's a weird choice. Yeah. The, to not have that with crossplay. I think essentially that's kind of where devs get to look at it. And I'm not going to say that it's lazy. It's just like, are we going to compete with Discord now? Like, yeah, there might be somebody who's like, oh, I'm not going to use that. But that's where I hope that it's some theoretical future that like Discord can somewhat integrate with, you know, PlayStation oh, yeah. chat. So where like, let's say you're friends because like somebody's like, oh, there's security and there's what if you get into a disc, you know, meaning like I could be in a Discord call and I could invite somebody on Xbox and somebody on PlayStation, and then they're remaining in their Xbox ecosystem and on their PlayStation ecosystem. So you don't have to sit here and download an additional app. That these systems all just kind of start coming together to be self-integrated. I think that would be a good solution as opposed to I mean, like native. But yeah, go ahead. That's because I mean it, it could just be embedded into the game, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it could just be embedded within the game, and all it requires you Ooh, to do nice. is log in to create an account and log in. You can create the account within the game. It's already embedded. Once you're in, you can choose to jump into that channel that you create or not. And it, it, it's it's really um, that easy. It mm-hmm. just needs, you know, two parties to come together to talk, come to an agreement. And that could be the start of something revolutionary in video games. You wouldn't need a PlayStation party or mm-hmm. a, you know, Xbox Live party or a PC party in the end. Discord can cover it all, and it could mm-hmm. be embedded into every infrastructure. What's interesting, mm-hmm. and Aodin points this out, Xbox and PC actually can utilize their you know their own party chat. So it's really kind of only Stadia and PlayStation that ends up having to default to Discord because if you're on PC, like there is a native Xbox chat party app. Like it's like you can just talk to anybody on Xbox and more. So it would be interesting to see, and really good point, Aodin. Uh, for bringing that up. By the way, yeah, Aiden does speed runs. We've been talking on uh, on Twitter, so we'll have to talk some more. That's actually one of the pieces of content I'm kind of looking forward to, but either making or watching, because mm-hmm. like you're talking about, like, hey, what's this build and how how quick can you clear the content? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be kind of a fun, um, you know, fun spring uh, for us and for this game. All right, let's go mm-hmm. ahead and I want to move into kind of the cover system because I see also chat talking <clears throat> about it as well. Uh, Since the demo's launch, we have been playing uh, special attention to all-player feedback and have since been reading discussions about the cover system in Outriders. While it's not something that we will be able to fix within the demo at this time, the main game will not only include a a slew of bug fixes for many of the cover locations, but will also address a fix for a handful of systematic issues that are currently affecting the cover mechanic on a global level. Uh, Soro, is uh, is this game a cover game or is this game a, uh, a chaos game? What do you think? Um, 
I mean, I utilize the cover whenever I can. You're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I got to wait for my cooldowns to be ready again, yeah, I'm going to hide behind some cover. <laughs> um, but I also have noticed that certain covers, uh, like uh, wooden barricades or anything like that, if you're sitting behind it, they can actually be shot apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool. I like that. It's like, yeah, okay, it's a barricade, it's cover, but it's not something that's going to last you. Yeah. <laughs> so keep on moving, keep on moving, which I enjoy. That That's a lot of fun. I can't just sit there for 10 minutes in the same, you know, there's a sawhorse sitting there that's technically cover and it's indestructible. No, nah, it doesn't work that way. You, you got to get behind something else or just push on forward. Johnny, any thoughts? Um, I mean, it depends on what I'm playing with. I've been actually really enjoying uh, Raw Rog's Gaze. I just put a video out on it yesterday. Uh, I do utilize cover for that maybe about a quarter of the time, but most of the time I'm still running and gunning a lot. But yeah, I mean, with my other build, uh, using the Iron Maiden mod, I don't use cover at all. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just unleash hell, basically, and just, you know, build my shields, generate my health, and I'm good to go. As long as I got something to shoot, I'm staying alive. Chaos, does this solve any, or does this alleviate any concerns? Are you a cover mechanic, a man, or are you a, oh, you were talking about Devastator earlier, so what are your thoughts? Uh, me? Um, I don't go into cover much at all, which is why I'm probably almost, always dead. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I prefer to just run about and just shoot things with my shotgun and refill my health. The game is designed for that. It encourages that, and I'm grateful for that mechanic because it's nice for a game to say we don't want you to go into cover it's there but you know just go kill stuff because that's how you're going to stay alive and i'm okay with it and you know the fact that you can go into cover the fact that they gave you the ability i think is a nice touch because every once in a while you kind of need to but oh, okay yeah that's it so vulcan did you run into any issues with the cover system as it's implemented or like does this note speak, uh, speak to you yeah so um the cover system you know I'm kind of like a hybrid, right? I'll, I'll use it if I need to for Technomancer or things like that. Um, but anything else, it's just freight train, just murder train running through stuff. Um, <laughs> I find the enemies but, are oddly like accurate, and I appreciate that aspect. I know. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So it's like you come out of cover, you're getting hit. Like it's yeah. yeah go go, please continue. <laughs> Um, but from a cover perspective, yeah. So I'm hoping some of the things they fix are like, you know, rounding corners, um, making that a little bit more, um, easy because right now it's just, it's, it's brutal to, to try to round corners on cover. Some of the cover is not, you can't dive into that cover for some reason, that object is not a cover, you know, oriented object, I guess. Um, so I'm hoping a lot of that stuff gets fixed because there's been a lot of videos where it's like, Hey, I can dive into cover right here, but I can't hear. Um, and then there's some issues when it comes to actually getting into cover for like animation canceling. If you're reloading and you're trying to get in there, it won't work. So hopefully all that stuff gets fixed. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's not a cover game. So, yeah. um, you know, just run through stuff, blow stuff up. <laughs> that's, that's the funniest thing Pretty about much. the PR marketing. Every time I'm hiding, you just kind of like, all right, going to get a little bit of life. Let my cooldown yeah. reset. I'm like, I keep in my mind. I'm like, I'm a filthy coward. I'm exactly. such a coward. Seth Stone says, what's this cover thing you guys keep talking about? Yeah. It's all about rushing in. Screw that. LOL. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so hey, absolutely. If it, if it's there and it's a game mechanic, I will use it. The, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it is something that people called out, like watching other content creators and people saying like, hey, this is supposed to be a cover shooter, right? I'm not able to stick to this. And so there's obviously some bugs that, are, that it looks like they're addressing. And then essentially, I think when people's the light switch moment happens with this game for them is when they're like, it's not about cover. Cover is not for us. It's for the enemies. That's for them to hide behind. And our job is to find ways to get and disrupt that and then uh, and then just utterly, utterly uh, destroy them. All right, so a couple of items here. Items disappearing. Uh, this issue that they're treating very seriously. I've seen some people, thankfully it has not happened to me, but I've heard stories from people within the community talking about like, yeah, I got this legendary and then I logged in and it was gone. It's like how how utterly like frustrating that is. Now they say, in the spirit of transparency, while they do not have a system in place that can automatically restore an affected player's complete inventory, 
Our teams are nevertheless working hard to see what may be possible in the future. Once they've identified and resolved the underlying cause for the issue, as well as further investigate the feasibility of a restoration system, they will provide the community with an update to try and get affected players back on their feet. So they are aware of the issue. They do not have a solution to the issue. And unfortunately, if you get bit by it, it's a matter of wait. Now, as long as they are able to deliver on that, on a restoration system or being able to kind of help players out in that regards, I think ultimately that'll be good for the health of the game in the long term, because if they ever want to do some kind of event, who knows what they'll end up doing, but the ability to sit here and say, hey, by the way, we sent you guys in the mail something, you know, and like, hey, go, go have fun. And everybody can be excited about like that if they ever do that. But I'm happy that they're aware of it. It's important that they talk about it here. Anybody have any thoughts? Anybody get bit by having a piece of item uh, disappear? I haven't been bit by it yet, and I hope I don't. And for anyone that has been, you know, it sucks. <laughs> However, I am absolutely loving the transparency here. Um, they could have sat on this. They could have kind of just, you know, tried to give the whole PR speech. But they haven't. They've come out and said, look, this is a problem. We don't have a fix for it. You know, we are trying to find a problem, what it is. And they have applied a fix for one of the other bugs where you lose items, where you lose connection during a transition. And that's apparently going to be fixed. But there are other issues. But I, I really like the fact that they're just coming out and putting their hands up saying, you know, we know this is an issue and we don't have a problem for it. They're not just staying quiet about it. And it's weird because you don't... You don't really get that in this day and age from developers coming out with this level of openness, and I really like it. It still sucks that they don't have a solution for it, but I appreciate their honesty. So, well, Resolve, totally mind-blowing. Thank you so much. Doing a super chat saying they are being very transparent and very pro-consumer, and I am very optimistic for the future. So thank you for supporting the podcast and the channel. But I want to kind of take that, your comment, and throw it back to Chaos as well. You and me, we got our hearts broke by Anthem. I would think a lot of people got got hurt by that game, right? And uh, yeah. Vulcan's shaking mm-hmm. your head. So I want to I want to get Vulcan's thoughts here. But is this different? Is there a different feeling? Are we just being suckered in by hype and being excited for a new game, or is this legit different? Or is this a different situation than Anthem was two years ago? Chaos. Um, no, for me, it's very different. I've also um, had conversations with the community manager Robbie, which was unheard of for me with anthem they were so uptight they wouldn't tell you anything and you know having those back and forth conversations it's really really nice and you know just being able to get straight answers might not be the answer i want to hear but getting straight answers is really amazing because you don't have to sit there and twiddle your thumbs or just wonder what the hell's going on they they're very open about it and i really like that and this 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 it's just a complete contrast from what we had with Anthem. With Anthem, it was all locked doors, keys, and everything the moment the shit hit the fan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, seeing the contrast here where there are issues, really serious issues like this one, but they're willing to come out and talk to you about it, let you know what's going on, and let you know what the situation is. To me, that bodes really well for the dev team, the community team, keeping that relationship and that uh, respect backwards and forward going. And it also, you know, makes you want to support what they're doing more because they're in it with you rather than just for the money. Mm-hmm. Even though they are in it for the money, of course. But, you know, they're in it for they're in it with you. And I like that. Uh, Vulcan, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Chaos, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, This is very different from Anthem. Anthem was really kind of, we're keeping everything close to the chest. Um, A lot of kind of contradictory answers when we asked questions about it. And it was almost like, you know, pulling teeth when we were just trying to get some basic stuff. Um, And also, I think, you know, because a lot of people were comparing this to Anthem. um, This seems like more of a fleshed out idea. They have a vision. They have leadership, you know, pushing that vision. They have the people in place to kind of continue driving that. And they're not trying to market or upsell or anything like that. You know, this is not a game as a service. This is a complete package. We delayed it because of this. Um, Will we have future content? Maybe. If you guys really like the game, then sure. We're open to, you know, making expansions for it. But it's not, you know, there's not a lot of leading you on conversations or topics. And yeah, so I just feel like that's probably the big difference that I see. 
Well, that's excellent because I definitely agree with it. The only concern I have is that the game is popular, people love it, and then it's like, oh, where is there more? And then it's like, no, not for a while. Like you gotta wait, mm -hmm. and that can that ultimately <laughs> is a healthy thing. Kicking back, playing multiple games, God forbid. <laughs> um, but at the core of it, it's like, yeah, like you guys are going to have to wait a little bit for the next thing to, to drop, et cetera. But, uh, I'm loving the universe. I'm loving what they're, what they're seeing. And honestly, I'm just hoping for the best. I think as gamers, it would be awesome to have a big win this, this year. Last year really was a rough year for everybody. We don't need to ha rehash it. We were all there. Um, but at the core <laughs> of it, it would be really exciting to sit here and be like a surprise hit coming out. Uh, helping to kind of address all the, the the naysayers, and that's what I think. Like, and and chat was and brought it up, talking core about. It seems like uh, people can fly. Like, looked at some of the real core issues, the real pain points within the looter itself, and is addressing it. Meaning, you don't have to wait to the end game to play the loot game, because mm -hmm. it's happening every step of the way. Oh, you want to be super powerful and crazy? Go nuts. That's the fun aspect and getting you hooked and having a fun time. The fact that people are playing the demo, farming the demo, streaming the demo, you know, and the like, it, it's mind blowing that it's already had that kind of reception. If they can carry what they've already showed us continually forward throughout the entire expansion uh, or the, the entire game and into the end game, I think it's going to offer a lot of value to people. Now, somebody asked me earlier today, like, hey, is it worth it? Is it worth the 60 bucks? And I go, based off of what we've seen and what they've shared us, I'd say no. And I would say, wait, if you're interested, because if you're just here for a story, it's 35 hours. I've been, I usually wait away uh, a, a dollar per hour of joy. So I would say if I can get 60 hours of fun out of this game, it's worth it for the cost of 60 bucks. If you're going to play less than that, wait till it goes on sale or probably in the mm -hmm. Game Pass next year. Like there's going to be plenty of options. Um, everybody's got their own def value of definition of worth. You got to have to find your own. I play these kind of games like crazy. I've already, I, I've spent zero dollars and I've already gotten halfway there, right? So as soon as the game's yeah. out, I only have to beat <laughs> the story for me to get the, the value of the cost of it. But that's just that. Uh, at its core principle. Does anybody want to weigh in on what we're uh, on this discussion? Uh, Johnny and Sora, I don't want to exclude you from it. Go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. You know, like Chad is saying, you know, Anthem burned a lot of a lot of people, you know, from the very beginning, whenever the community coordinators, you know, started doing these little public streams and, oh, you know, come watch this. And they didn't even know their own game. Mm -hmm. They didn't know their own game at all. And then, you know, like uh, Vulcan said, you know, a lot of it was uh, just misconstrued, very misleading. And, you know, Chaos said lock and key. I think that was very appropriate. You know, it was very lock and key. And then you got these developers and their community coordinators. They're not being overly transparent. And I think that's that's a good thing, because when you're overly transparent, that in itself almost becomes suspicious to a degree. It's like, why are you guys telling us like every little nitty gritty piece? We don't need to know all that. Are you guys, you know, by chance hiding something in the in what appears to be the truth? They're just saying very, like you said, Brian, very, being very matter of fact. Here's the issue. This is what we're we're working on. We don't have a solution, but we are working on it. You know, that type of transparency, I think, is exactly what this genre needs. Because let's face it, over the past you know two and a half years, we've had nothing but disappointment. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, straight up, nothing but disappointment. And I think overall. Outriders is setting itself up very well because they're not overhyping their own game. You know, us as uh, content creators, we're doing that hype for them and they're able to capitalize on that passively. And Outriders is shaping up to be a game that really, based off of just the demo downloads, and I was talking about this last night in my Discord, they've got 2 million demo downloads, right? Mm -hmm. Across all platforms. Even if they only get half of those as pre-orders. That's 60 bucks a pre-order at a million pre-orders. So they're already setting themselves up right now. They're, you know, the little jingle bells are going off in their heads saying, Hey, you know, we got a good game and they're probably already starting to move forward with plans for a DLC almost guaranteed. If they're not, that's just silly. <laughs> Zora. So I do really appreciate them uh, being this transparent because I'd rather them be this transparent and tell us the nitty gritty about, hey, we're fixing this. We know this is an issue. We know this, this, this. 
instead of later on it becoming an even bigger issue and then nobody or everybody going oh this game's crap because they didn't fix this when they should have yeah it's like they're telling us ahead of time what the issue is so we don't come out later and say no don't like it anymore because you didn't fix it Mm -hmm. the uh the principle here is that when the foundation is rotten it's really hard to recover and build on that it feels like right now I, every bug and, and thing, and, and it's like, that's kind of more quality of life. I don't feel like the loot sucks. I don't feel like the gameplay sucks. I don't feel like the ability to jump in and have crossplay sucks. Like all of that is like, okay, here's the litmus test you passed. Then it's about kind of refining some of those edges. Like, okay, turns out people like, don't like, you know, watching the same cutscene over and over, you know, like some of those things that just kind of say, Hey, let's remove, like, I'm fine. The fact that it has a story. If you don't like the story, I don't care. Like, it's like, I'm going to enjoy the story. I want to know more about the world and the characters. And then once I have that, then it's going to be like, how, how can we gamify? How can we have fun? How can we remove obstacles to play and enjoy the game itself? I hope that you really enjoyed that highlight. And I hope that you check out the full podcast. Again, link is in the description. Thanks for being here. And hope you have a fantastic day, you wonderful, beautiful individuals.